somebody said, hospitals are sacred places. And I started thinking about that. Every single person who walks through the doorway of the hospital, if it's a patient, family member, doesn't matter, something changes in their life. They are healed, they die, they're born, repaired, and every employee is a part of that sacred change. When we talk about the mission of Peace Health uh, is to carry on the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, and we do that by relieving pain and suffering and by treating each person in a loving and caring way, that is really the reason why we come to work, and it's the reason why this organization exists. Mission encompasses and holds and frames everything that we do. For me, it's not about religion as religion, but it's about the privilege of participating in a ministry that essentially is about healing, it's about compassion. So have you been a patient here very long? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Everything right. One of the things that I think Margaret Anna instilled in the early years is that it isn't enough to talk about Christianity while people are starving. And so a belief, certainly, that everyone has a need and a right to basic care and wellness, regardless of religion, class, condition, race. And to the best of our ability, never turning anyone away. We had our son 25 years ago, as a matter of fact, at Sacred Heart Hospital. When you're on the board, as I was for 10 years, you really see the substance of what's here and how care and the caring for one another is really, in a sense, what holds us together as a society. I think for most of us, our entire early orientation to the hospital was through the sisters. As much as the sisters are incredibly compassionate. They're also equally as determined to have a viable business, to keep it sound, to keep it growing. I give Sister Monica a lot of credit for having a vision and feeling so strongly that this was the right direction for healthcare for this entire region. There's a tremendous history and heritage that we are building on, the heritage of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace, their courage, their persistence. I'll never forget the first orientation with Sister Monica Heron. And she began describing the charism of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace. It felt like I had found a place. The belief in peace and justice were foundational for the work that the sisters did. Not only the sisters, but uh, the pioneering physicians, the pioneering nurses and so forth that started the ministry here. And I feel like I'm carrying on that legacy. Now we're beginning a new chapter in the life of Peace Health with the opening of Sacred Heart Medical Center at Riverbend. It's been quite a journey. The sisters came to Sacred Heart in a way they have come to many hospitals. The depression was devastating and caused Pacific Christian Hospital to go into bankruptcy. The sisters were asked to come and take it over at a time of great difficulty by several pathologists. And so Sacred Heart was born out of a response to the people in the community. So on July 9th of 1936, these four women in full habit got off the train in Eugene, Oregon. Now you can imagine, they have no place to live, the hospital's been closed, so it's dirty. No staffing, I mean, they started from scratch. They took on something that was unbelievable in one sense. Frequently, they had to get the maintenance people to carry patients up to the floors because the elevator wasn't working. People were very suspicious about what these new nuns were up to. There were great nurses too. Pearl Wolf had worked in the old hospital, and uh, she reported back after six months that none of the nefarious things were happening. Sister Theodore Marie was masterful. 
She created community advisory boards. She reached out across religious communities in Eugene, brought in people of different faiths to advise. Here again, I think the relationship that they created was testament to how they did things. And that was forming partnerships with communities and more importantly by the 30s with physicians. A couple of the doctors, they said, well, sister, we can't do it the old way. You know, we've got to have new equipment. And she said, sir, I will take care of getting the equipment. You find the very best doctors you can possibly attract to this community, the very best, and it'll work out fine. Well, they did. We had many Mayo-trained physicians. And so the population grew, and the reputation of the hospital grew, and the reputation of the doctors grew, and that has been the tradition. I came to Eugene in 1958 to enter the School of Nursing. In those days, we had uh, sisters in charge of each of the floors. Of course, a lot of change happened in medicine over those years, too. My perspective is that we've been doing uh, kind of regional medical care practices here for 35 or 40 years. For example, 1969, the first cardiac catheterizations outside of Portland were done. In 1971, Bob Hodum started the first open heart surgery program in Eugene. You know, I remember my grandfather coming up for open heart surgery at Sacred Heart, and uh, that was probably 35 years ago. He's uh, 95 five years old right now. There were bronchoscopy being done in Eugene before Portland. Dr. Tom Rowe was a pediatrician. On his day off, he would come in and work on procedures and protocols, and Dr. Harlow, too. Well, I remember the day pretty clearly when this gentleman became very ill and was on a ventilator and was actually near death. And he started to get better. And um, I thought my contribution to this was uh, pretty great. I was bending over his bedside and, and I said, Mr. Smith, look up, look up. Do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? And he looked up and clear as a bell, he said, you're Mork. can't even imagine how many babies I've delivered. I was buying a Valentine's card one year and this woman at the counter looked at me and she goes, oh, you, you were my nurse 18 years ago when my son was born and I've always wanted to give you a hug. Can I give you a hug? Sacred Heart was the only hospital for us. All of our growing up lives and for my parents were a big part of their lives. The interesting thing is that Sister Theodore Marie in the 50s and 60s proposed moving the hospital to North Eugene. And while it didn't happen, that was a vision well ahead of its time. The irony in Eugene is that most of us really didn't appreciate what we had. A very large, sophisticated institution in a relatively small town. In one of the first interviews I did with the local newspaper, when we were talking about growth and development, they said, why are you undertaking this? Now you know it's going to be fraught with controversy. My reaction was a very simple one. I said, we need to have one large community debate about where this hospital is going to be for the next hundred years. Sometimes it can be extremely difficult to bring everyone along with you and to partner and really form a solid healthcare community. And it was a pretty tough battle. There's no question that we had outgrown this hospital in terms of its size, its technology, its efficiency. And medicine had evolved to a point where we needed a new type of healing environment. But this hospital has been central to Eugene for 70 years. People have been born here. People have died here. And I think the idea of moving it to another place was difficult for everyone. Actually, changing our address, if you please, from Eugene to Springfield was probably the hardest decision we have ever made. And to really broaden our thinking into regional thinking instead of just city thinking. 
And I guess you could think of it as a whole new way of carrying out the mission of the sisters and to Peace Health. It was really a conversation about changing our entire healthcare culture. How is it that patients really heal? And how can we do a better job of that? And it really does get you to think about the world in a different way. I look at River Bend really as almost a monument to all the years that the sisters have given this community. It's a wonderful state-of-the-art medical facility, but I look at it more than that. What we have here is invaluable to the people in this community. And what you see is a building designed to put the patient at the center of care. From the very beginning, we designed this building to be what patients and families wanted most. The first thing they said is, I want my loved one to be able to be with me 24 hours a day and to assure that we needed to go to private rooms. The building itself really gives people a place to build on this idea of exceptional medicine, compassionate care, great technology, great design nestled into and compatible with the natural surroundings. It will and will create a beautiful environment, both for our patients and our families, that is really healing to your soul, and that makes a difference in how fast you heal. Peace Health definitely is now one of the largest, most modern hospital facilities on the West Coast, but if you listen to your own heart when you're a patient, or to your loved one's heart when they're a patient, they're actually looking for who holds their hand and who helps them not be afraid when they are afraid. So there is this spirit of healing and caring and trying to cure and help and comfort that does pervade everything and it's really very moving. And part of why that's important is that this is every hospital, every entity, every region in which we live. There are patients to the, the south borders of the state and to the coast. About 30% that come from outside of the Eugene Springfield area. These are our next door neighbors, kids teachers, the soccer coach. We're just as likely to see the grocery clerk when she's either having her baby or her son's appendix has to come out, or her father has just been diagnosed with lung cancer. You ready? Yes, I guess so. This is a transformation of how healthcare is delivered in this community. And yeah, there's been challenges in the history of Peace Health as there is with uh, every organization, and there will be challenges in the future. We want to be right there in the top tier. And as we look to the future of River Bend and of the redeveloped university campus, and the prospects of collaborating with the University of Oregon and Oregon Health Sciences University, it's exciting. It really is exciting. We're creating an endowment that will serve our mission for years and years to come. And that is the greatest legacy of both of our campuses. The Sisters of St. Joseph, they are the inspiration. They're the people who make all of us realize why we're here and who we're here for. It is about taking that charism, embedding it, making it flame up in the hearts of those who work with us and to whom we truly entrust the continuance of the heritage that we leave. I want to look in the eyes of those folks and say you have an awesome trust of living out the mission, a real commitment to the vulnerable, touching mind, body, spirit, with a heart and a focus on every patient and every family who comes to us. And so Sacred Heart is born to be carried on far into the future. Oh, I'm thrilled to death about Riverbend. I have a rock that I picked up on that property when we first purchased it, and there was nothing. It was rocks and trees and ground. I can't wait to go back in 30 years and say, look at this, it's an entire community.